Sally Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and I am going to make a pair of earrings today with you. We're going to be using some herringbone stitch to make these awesome Romanoff earrings. They are using a 10 millimeter pearl and some 15 and 11 OC beads in that herringbone style but it's actually going to be a tubular herringbone so I'll go over that with you. If you need any of the materials for these earrings, there'll be a little drop down here on the left linking those, or what you can do is actually go right underneath the video. There's some video descriptions and there's a little button that says show more. You can click on that little button and it'll give you links to all of the different products. That way you can grab them at PotomacBeads.com and shop with me online, or you can visit us at our Potomac Bead locations, which you can check out at PotomacBeads.com as well. For the earrings, we're going to be using two 10 millimeter pearls. If you want to make these smaller, you can use smaller pearls and just do a shorter rope or just have them further down in the actual piece. I like the 10 millimeter, they kind of fit perfectly in this herringbone. So you want two 10 millimeter pearls. These here are Czech glass pearls that we have, and these are in that ivory pearl color. In addition to my two pearls, I'm going to need two ear wires, and these are just stainless steel ear wires, and two jump rings. These jump rings here are 20 gauge rings, and they're just a silver plated uh, ring, and I have them in uh, about a five millimeter, 4.8 millimeter opening is what the inner diameter is. It doesn't really matter what size they are. You can see there's a lot of room above there. So you could do a different size if you need to do that. I am working on my bead mat here. I also work on my bead board if I'm kind of moving around one way or another. And that's just going to stop your beads from rolling as you're working with them and keep them in place for you. As far as seed beads go, I'm going to be using the 11-0 in the Duracoat Galvanized Silver. And then I have my 15 O's here in the Turquoise Green color. We are doing, again, that tubular herringbone. So we're going to go right around and kind of make a herringbone strip and then go in and attach that. The thread that we're going to be using for this whole project is .006 wildfire beading thread. You are going to use about 5 feet of thread, 4 to 5 feet of thread per earring. Like I said, you can make these earrings a lot longer, you can make them a little bit shorter, and I'll explain that as we do in the video. That's going to affect the actual amount of thread that you need. I also have a size 10 English beading needle. You could use a size 10 or you can use a 12, whichever you prefer. Also handy tools that I have sitting by are my wildfire cord cutter or thread burner. We also have the thread zap, the thread zap uh, 2 and the thread zap ultra. So if you need any of those, um, but they all do the same thing. They just burn through the end of your thread. I also have a pliers here sitting. That way once I burn the end of the thread, I can smush it down and it'll make it easier to put actually into the needle. So for our thread needles, once we get them threaded, I am using green because I have that green turquoise. Right now to get started, I'm going to lay out a pile of my 11 O's, and I'm also going to lay out a pile of my 15 O's. Our pearls and our ear wires and everything are going to get pushed to the side because we're going to add those at the very, very end. Again, what we're going to do is start making a strip. So pour out a big, uh, long tube of those because you'll need a bunch. If you're a person that has a lot of difficulty learning different stitches, and you know this ahead of time, you may actually want to watch the other YouTube video that I have doing this um, tubular herringbone stitch. It's very detailed how to start the stitch and also how to add beads to the stitch when you're working it. Herringbone generally is going to sit in a V pattern. The side here is actually our herringbone stitch. The other portion of the herringbone is on the inside. So this is going to be four beads to kind of start our herringbone. I've decorated the herringbone with 15 O beads, so that way it doesn't look like that opening the whole way around the project. I picked this color because I love the look of the turquoise and pearl together, but you really could use anything that you want as well as any bead that you want. So you could make these in a completely different style, hang some fringe off, do what you want. But here it is learning that tubular peyote or that tubular herringbone in a very simplistic form and then learning what to do with it. To start out, I'm going to use a stop bead. I have my 15 O's out and I'm going to use that same color to be the stop. I take it to the end of my thread and I really only need a little bit to tie a knot onto, so I have about two inches there. I'm going to take my needle 
back through that bead two times. Once I have that stop bead on and the needle through it two times, I'm going to get ready to actually begin the herringbone stitch. When I begin the herringbone stitch, it is going to be a basically two wide herringbone. Each section of herringbone has the two beads and you're going to have those on the side and then again we're decorating with the 15 O's. To start out my herringbone stitch, what I'm going to do is pick up four of my 11 O beads. Picking up four of those with my needle and I'm going to let those drop down next to that stop bead. Once I have them down next to my stop bead, I'm going to take my needle back through two of those original beads. This is going to face the two beads next to one another, right on top of each other. Our herringbone stitch is actually going to go up the sides now. The way to think about it before it gets tubular in shape is that we're going to be expanding the top and the bottom. It gets a little confusing for people because it goes from being flat to being tubular and facing up. On the sides of my herringbone, in between these V's, on the sides here, I'm going to be adding my 15 O's and that's how I get that look. I add a 15 O and I sew through my third original bead that I have in line. When I'm through that third bead, I'm going to add two more beads to my herringbone stitch. Herringbone is always added two beads at a time. I'm going to sew through bead number four, which will bring me back out near that stop bead. When you pull the beads for herringbone, you also want to make sure that they're sitting correctly and that your thread is not twisted. So until you get going the first couple times, you may need to kind of pull the thread a little bit to force it to do that. I'm on the side again, so I'm going to add a 15 0 Sewing back through bead number one. I'm going to add two more beads, and I'm actually going to sew down bead number two. Ignoring the 15 0 that's there, making sure those beads sit straight right on top of one another. And then from bead number two, I'm going to add a 15 and actually switch over and sew up the fifth bead that I added, which would have been that first section where I added those two beads in the middle of the herringbone. That is going to be called a step up. As you get further along in the project, you can see how that step up kind of affects it. What I'm going to do now is start to kind of curl those two ends up towards one another and give a little pull. You can see then how those 15 O's are going to decorate the side. In between my two beads here on the side, the two 11's, I'm going to put two more beads. Sew through that bead number six there. Pull my thread up and out of the way. I got a little twisted. Once I have those two beads in place, again, kind of play with your thread. You can see here that herringbone starting to take shape. Again, I'm going to kind of push those two together, pinching them. Add a 15 to get from my one side of my herringbone over to the other. When I jump over to the other side, I'm going to jump over and pick up the herring, the last piece of herringbone that I added. When you have that last piece of herringbone added, when you go through that, that's when you're going to add two more beads. So you can see it's starting to kind of take that pinched cylindrical tubular shape. After I add two beads, I'm going to come down the second bead. And that will always kind of force the beads to sit again in that little V pattern. So I have now six stitches of my herringbone on and you can start to see the shape taking place. I'm going to add a 15 to decorate the side and then I'm going to come over to the next basically empty herringbone piece. By the time you get that you can really start to see those turquoise on the side. 
whenever you're in between the two silvers here, that's when you add two beads to your herringbone. I sewed down that one on the side. So you're always kind of sewing up, adding two beads, sewing down. Make sure those two beads sit right. I'm gonna add a 15 and jump over to the empty bead on the other side. Pull nice and tight. I'm at the in between the 11s, so I'm gonna add two 11s, sew up, add two beads, sew down. And you can see I'm really kind of pinching that project to get that tubular shape. As we build further and further and we build our uh, five inches or four inches of sew or so of our tubular herringbone, it's gonna get easier and easier to keep track. You also wanna make sure to keep that tail out of the way. When I'm on the side again here, I want to add my next 15 and then sew up. So every time you're in between the 11s, the easiest thing to remember is that when you're coming out on 11, you add two and go down the one beside it. When you're on the side of the tubular herringbone, you add a 15 and that's just purely for decorative reasons. You're going to skip over to the next 11 and sew up. Again, I'm in between those two silver 11s. Sewed up, add two, sew down. Add a 15 0 and pop over to the Once you add that 15 0 you're coming out the top of the 11. And the further you go here, the more you can see it really taking shape. So whenever you're at the top of the 11, you're adding two 11s and then you're sewing down the 11. You're gonna add a 15 because you're sewing down and you're gonna sew up through the 11 on the other side. Whenever you sew up, you add two 11s down, you add a 15. We're gonna continue this tubular herringbone stitch until you have about four inches. Those four inches then will become rounded out and that's what's going to create our little basically bezel set to drop the pearl in for the earrings. Continue on building those 11s and just the 15s hanging out connecting the sides and covering the thread as you go. As we get to about four inches, I'll come back to you guys and I'll show you how we measure and how we end the top. As I'm going further here, you can see the tubular herringbone starting to take shape. If you notice that it starts to twist a tiny little bit, that's because the only step up we did was at the very start. It's creating a slight turn in it, um, which I did in this too. It doesn't matter for this project because we are actually getting that shape that we're gonna turn into. So we're turning into that almost rounded shape anyway. You can see here, if you want to, you could stop Kind of at any point to really connect those ends. You are going to want to do about 36 herringbone rows to get this size drop earring. Again, you can go longer, you can go shorter, that's up to you. But I have a little bit more than, um, I got about an inch and a half, and you can see we need to get to that a little bit over than three inches. So I'm a little over halfway. I'm going to keep going, just simply building my herringbone by adding those two beads and the 15s on the sides. So continue building right as you go, add your beads. And again, if you see that little turn occurring, not a big deal. That's just because we're not doing an official step up because it doesn't really matter for this project. The step up that we did at the beginning was just that simple one where we went from the one side to the other side, going back a little bit. But with this here, we're just skipping basically from one side to the other, which is causing that slight turn, but it's not gonna matter for this video and for this project. So continue going and making that long herringbone rope here. You can see it does have a little bit of pull and give to it. We are going to be taking advantage of that to get to its shape. So continue on until you have about 36 rows of your beads. You can easily figure that out by counting your 15s right down the middle. So I've gotten to the end of my 36 rows here, and what I'm actually gonna do is add those two pieces together. 
When I add the two pieces together, I just kind of moved my stop bead down a little bit, but I kept it on there to weigh down the piece. To add the two ends together, we're basically going to be linking one side of the herringbone with the other side. It'll create a little bit of a circle, and then we'll change it into a little bit of a teardrop at the top by kind of bringing the pieces together. When I'm entering or when I'm adding the two pieces of the herringbone together, I'm going to think of it as one long circle and one long strip. I'm going to be adding the bottom or inner two beads and the top outer two beads. When I open or add the top outer two beads too, I'll add some other beads and that's what will create the point. When I'm coming out of one of my herringbone sections here, so I'm coming out the top of an 11L, so it's like I need to add another piece of my herringbone. Instead, what I'm going to do is go over to the other side and turn those two pieces towards one another. I'm going to sew from one side of the bottom herringbone to the other, basically, on the opposite side. To do that, I'm actually going to sew down the herringbone bead that's on the inside from the starter of that herringbone. So when you're looking at it here, how they're going to line up is I have those two bottom beads that are lining up and then the two top beads that are going to line up. Those two bottom beads, again, I'm taking that first bead there and sewing down towards the inside of the circle. This is going to be on the same side that the thread is coming out of. Once I do that, you can see it's starting to take shape a little bit. On that side that I just sewed through, I'm going to have the bottom bead here that I'm coming down into, and I'm going to skip over to the other side of that little herringbone piece. So I'm skipping from the bottom, basically back bead, to the bottom top bead on the same side. And that's going to pull that in just a little bit closer. That bottom bead there, what I'm going to do then is sew down the other side. So it's kind of hard to explain here in this round, but basically I was coming out of the herringbone. I pushed that herringbone to the bottom and I'm coming out of that herringbone. I'm jumping over to the same bead that lines up on the opposite side and sew down that bead. From there, I sewed to the next herringbone bead on that same side on the bottom and came out. I'll pull it together tight now and you can kind of see. What I'm going to do to connect this next herringbone bead is I'm going to sew down the bead that's opposite that first bead that I was coming out of. And how you add this at the top is kind of up to you. You just want to make sure whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. But this is going to create kind of a seamless herringbone section. Here on the side when I jump to the top then of my herringbone, I actually have a little space to add another 15-0. I'm going to add the 15-0 because I want it to be fairly seamless as I look around the section. I'm then going to sew from the bottom of the herringbone on side one to the top of the herringbone on side one, which will be the side that's on the left. When I pull that in, you can see more of that teardrop shape occur. What I'm going to do now to really exaggerate that teardrop is I'm going to sew from the top bead on the outer section here and sew down that same side through the bead that's right next to it. Once I've sewed down there, I'm going to add three beads of my 11s. I'm going to go to the other side and sew up the matching bead on the opposite side. That's going to add three beads in there and you can see kind of finish off that herringbone. When I go to the other side, I'm going to sew from bead one over to bead two in that same row of herringbone. This time, instead of adding three beads, I'm going to add one bead, pick up the center bead of those three additional beads that I added, and sew through that just in a line. And then I'm going to add one more 11L and sew over 
to the herringbone on the other side. So basically we're just making a loop around that top herringbone. When I add the beads, what that does is creates a point. So that bead there now on the top is the point at which I will add the little bail and clasp and closure to that herringbone in order to add the ladder stitch to hook the earring onto. When exiting the topmost bead, we're gonna do ladder stitch. Ladder stitch is adding a bead or two or three or four at a time, but creating a series of circles and figure eights. Coming out of the top bead, I added two beads onto my thread. In a round, sew through that topmost bead, bringing the needle towards you. This is gonna cause those two beads to set right on top of the single bead. Sew through those two beads that we just added, going into them, sewing towards the top. When I'm coming out the top of those beads, I'm gonna add two more beads and sew into the bottom. When I come out the top, I'm gonna to sew down the two beads I just added. That is letter stitch. I'm gonna add two more, sewing down through the two I just added, or the two previous, and up through the two added. I'm gonna do one more set of two, coming out the top, Add my two beads, sew in through the bottom of those, and sew down through the two I just added. Now that that's done, we're going to take our needle and sew through that initial first bead again. Whatever side my thread is coming out of on my ladder stitch, that's the side I want the needle to go in the 11L. That's gonna round out those little four sections of ladder stitch. When I'm coming out, I want to sew back, just like I was adding another ladder stitch, back through the last two beads in that circular formation. That'll pinch that ladder stitch right above that topmost bead. To this area then is where we will actually add the jump ring and the ear wire as we get to the end of the pendant. The needle and thread are coming out that ladder stitch. I'm gonna have it go back through the 11O again, and I'm right next to my exterior herringbone. Take your needle and sew down the exterior herringbone line through one side of it. So this is through the top of the outside. This is going to get us into position to add our pearl. Keep sewing down until we get to our base point to add our pearl. If you want to have an exact count, you can count how many beads are in the interior of our teardrop before you're actually adding the pearl. To get to the interior and to add the pearl, into that there. We are going to actually sew from the outside through the 15-0 and in towards the center of our herringbone stitch. To get to the center, I've sewed down 12 of my exterior 11 O's. I'm gonna go through my 15-0 and up through the 11 O on the opposite side. Once I'm out that area, I'm going to add my pearl, shift over to the side that's opposite, and we're going to sew our pearl in place. I'm going to sew up the bead on the opposite side, pulling that in. Oops, sorry. One down. So down that bead on the opposite side. And I'm gonna sew back through the pearl. When I come out the pearl, I wanna sew up through the bead that we were coming out of. So basically making kind of figure eights. 
that's going to really anchor the pearl. Because the pearl is made of glass, um, I do want to reinforce it because it's the heaviest part of the project. Although when you wear these, you really realize they're not very heavy at all. I'm sewing back through the pearl again. At this point, all I need to do is actually reinforce my thread. I'm going to sew right through the herringbone stitch on the inside and then come up so my threads match and meet on the top of the pendant or at the top of the earring. So I've sewed through the back of the herringbone or the side of the herringbone rather and when you get to the top simply slide off the stop bead and take off the needle. And I should say when you get to the top and your threads are right beside one another. All we do to finish it off is actually tie those two threads together. Earrings don't have a lot of wear and tear as far as um, pressure on those thread ends. So you can reinforce down the herringbone if you'd like, but you don't have to. Once I have a couple knots here at the top, and I try to do this at the back of the earring. Once I have those couple knots, I'm going to go in with my thread burner and just bird those thread ends off. If you want, you can use some super new glue to glue down those ends a little bit. I'm just going to burn those ends down and get ready to attach our jump ring and earring. To attach the jump ring, open the ring. You can use two sets of pliers with this. I usually use my hands. Slide the ring through the top of that herringbone or that ladder stitch section. Grab your ear wire and put that ear wire on. Put it on so that it faces correctly because there is a little bit of a front and a back to this pendant because the ladder stitch is going to face more to one side. Close up that jump ring by simply sliding it back in place. And then I usually tuck the seam of the jump ring, if you can see it, into the earring. Once you have that done, you are gonna be done those Romanoff earrings. They have that great dropping look. They're a statement piece that you can wear. You could do several of them and actually piece them together for a necklace. That would be gorgeous as well. So that's a challenge for some of you out there that like to expand on the videos is to make a bunch and actually create that little floral there at the bottom. Just an idea. But you can really go to town once you learn how to do this herringbone stitch. You can add again whatever you want in the middle. I could add and pick up different sections to add um, a smaller pearl there at the top and really play around with the design. The pinching at the top is what's creating that teardrop shape. If you want to, you can do it in a single loop as well. Again, if you have any trouble, you can check out the rest of our YouTube videos that deal with the herringbone stitch. You can also uh, follow us on YouTube and subscribe to this channel to get regular updates about different projects that we do like this, different products that we have coming out and exciting things that are going on in the beading world. You can also visit us at potomacbeads.com to get any of the materials for this, which are listed again right underneath the show more instructions or the show more right underneath the description of the video. You can take that list to your local Potomac Bead Company store or shop with me online at potomacbeads.com. Also, if you want to interact with us more and stay connected, you can join our Facebook group, which is jewelry or beading and jewelry making, and ask for um, permission to join that. Show what you're doing, what you're working on, ask any questions, and really interact with a great community of fellow beaters and jewelry makers. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and have fun making these Romanoff earrings. <laughs>